Well, our housing starts are out this morning at 8.30 Eastern time, and our next guest says we've hit bottom. David Simmons is an economist at Standard Chartered Bank, and he's a Bloomberg best for his accuracy on housing starts. David, so glad to have you with us this morning. John Ehrlichman, my colleague yeah. here, keeping me company as well. So a win for this data is just that it doesn't get any worse? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think here people are really looking for a very marginal improvement. No one's getting carried away with how the housing market's going to go. But I think the real concern would be if it did get worse, because really no one is looking for it to get worse. People have felt that this is the bottom. We're at a residual level here. And if it does get worse, then that's really going to be a big concern for the market, especially ahead of the FOMC this afternoon. But people who think there's too much government support in the housing market do think it's going to get worse. Right, well, those are, we've been saying there's too much government support, but the government support's pretty much all dropped out from the, support, the tax side. When you've had the tax removal in the first half of the year, that was supporting purchases. Now, there's the government support on the mortgage side. But the thing is, the mortgage market wouldn't really function without that at the present, so it really does need to be maintained just to ensure the market functions smoothly. Uh, I mean, we're watching housing starts, we're watching building permits. On a very basic level, to me, it seems somewhat surprising that people are still even building homes, right? Because all we talk about is inventory, inventory, and you can't even sell the houses that already exist. So how is this part of the economy holding up at all? Well, the thing is, you've got to remember, houses do get old, they do depreciate, and they do need to be replaced. Also, the U.S. is a massive market. It's like saying that, why are we building in the whole of Europe? Germany is still building. There are places in the States where there is still demand for housing. It's just there are places where there was massive overinvestment, such as in Arizona, where there doesn't really need to be that much building. And David, we keep talking about how some of the home builders have moved into a totally different business, buying some of this distressed property on the cheap because they know that business well. What about from the economic side of it? Is there a danger to that? In other words, focusing so much on that rather than building homes? even though there isn't much demand right now? I think the thing is they've really just allocated their skills from one area to another. At the moment, they've, they've got a lot of cash. When things were going well in the sector, they've built up a big cash surplus, and they've been thinking, well, what can we do with this? They're not really in any great rush to do overinvestment again, but they are probably looking at selected properties and making their investments like that. David, based on your models, it's almost an obnoxious question, but I mean, when do we see growth? As you say, the good news or a win today is just not getting worse. When do you think we see growth? I mean, I think this year you're really not going to see any addition to growth from housing. I think housing is pretty much going to stay around these sorts of levels. We're going to see marginal improvement, but not a lot. I think next year, unfortunately, because the jobs market is still going to be very weak, you're not going to see much improvement there. So it's really going to be 2012 we're looking for any real pickup. And what kind of numbers are you talking about? Today the housing starts expectations are something in the half million level, right? We yeah. used to see normally easily more than a million a month. Two million a month going back what, more, uh, a few years. What, what is the new normal in the housing market? I mean, I think you're probably going to see between 700,000 and a million. But again, it's going to depend on how the jobs picture is. It's really hard to call because obviously there's a disequilibrium in the market at the moment. It just depends on how we go back. And David, speaking of jobs, I mean, a lot of the reasons or one of the key reasons why people let their homes go and their homes are foreclosed on, they lose their job, they can't pay their mortgage. Foreclosures are still a big X factor in this market. I mean, I've seen estimates going up to 9 million more foreclosures to come. Is that overly pessimistic? I mean, I think that's slightly pessimistic, but I mean, I've still been seeing numbers around sort of five, around 5 million, and that's still an awful lot of inventory to come onto the housing market. If that comes on all in one go, you would probably see the housing market completely collapse. But the thing is, it's going to be coming through very slowly. Foreclosures mechanisms that are uh, the legal ramifications they have to go through do take a long time. So that's some comfort in a way. But it, the key here is really to keep people in their homes at the moment and also to make sure that the housing market continues to function. David, thanks so much for the time. Thanks, David. David Simmons, Bloomberg Best, joining us there from Standard Chartered.